Here at Merseycare, we're leading the way in implementing a nice public health guideline. We're going completely smoke-free by the 1st of March 2016. This isn't a decision we've taken lightly, and it affects each and every member of our staff and our service users. So we wanted to make sure that you understand why we're taking this journey together, so that we can all be confident in getting to the destination. Smoking is the single biggest health problem in the UK. It will kill one in four smokers between the ages of 30 and 69. This means that the choices you make today could make your service users live longer and healthier lives. As healthcare professionals, our service users already look to us for their healthcare advice. We don't give them alcohol. So why is tobacco any different? OK, OK, stop. I agree with you, but I don't know if I can actually do it. What about Bob, one of our service users? He looks forward to his smoking breaks. Isn't it cruel to take away that pleasure? Look, this is how Bob feels on a daily basis, right? He's not been smoking all night, so he wakes up really wanting a cigarette. His nicotine level's low, and he's probably not feeling too happy at all right now. OK, now this is during the morning cigarette break. His nicotine levels are replenished and he's feeling back to normal. But as the morning goes on, his nicotine levels dip and he's feeling bad again. But this time there's no one to escort him for his break, so he just keeps waiting and waiting and feeling worse and worse until you're finally free to take him outside. Isn't that cruel? Isn't it cruel to let Bob continue this cycle of craving and addiction? Well, I guess so, yeah. I never thought of it that way before. What if you could help Bob manage his addiction so that he never felt like that? It's the withdrawal from nicotine that makes him feel so bad, so what if he had enough nicotine in his body to stop that from happening? Smoking doesn't actually relieve his stress or calm him down, you know. The nicotine only relieves the withdrawal symptoms. We can use nicotine replacement therapy to help manage the ups and the downs so that Bob doesn't have to worry about when his next cigarette break might be. Okay, but what do we do if he gets aggressive and we can't go out for a smoking break? The same thing you do when anyone gets aggressive. You've got the skills and the experience in order to de-escalate any challenging situation. Smoker or non-smoker, does it matter? No, I suppose it doesn't. And we've trained staff on the wards as smoke-free champions, so you can also provide specialist support to Bob should he, or you, want the extra help in hand. It's good to know the staff are all in this together and can support each other. And in exactly the same way that we no longer smoke in pubs and restaurants, it will also just become accepted and then Bob won't think twice about it. That's true. I'd completely forgotten it used to be so normal to have a smoking and non-smoking section when we went out to eat, and now it's just not. Exactly. And you can still take him outside for a break and a chat. Smoking ticks many boxes and sometimes it's not always about the nicotine. You might like to ask Bob what he'd like to do during those times instead. OK, so what about e-cigs? Aren't they a healthier alternative? E-cigs are currently unlicensed and unregulated. That means that the manufacturers can put whatever they like in them. Because they haven't been around that long, researchers don't yet know what the long-term effects of using them are. Would you give someone medicine if you weren't sure if it was safe? No, that's why we have drug trials. Exactly. And as healthcare professionals, we follow expert guidance to ensure what we do is helpful, not harmful. There isn't any guidance at all for e-cigs. Oh. But don't just listen to me. I want you to meet Kate, Harriet and Alan, who are mental health service users just like Bob, and they've all gone smoke-free in South London and Maudsley Trust. I used to smoke 50 a day. I've not had a cigarette in six months. I mean, if I can do that, what else can I achieve? I feel so rich these days, the richest I've ever been. For the first time in my life, I feel I can do anything. OK, well I feel more confident now. For Bob and for me, 
I'm ready to give it a try. And that's all we ask. And there might be bumps along the way and lessons to be learned, but that's what Reaching for Excellence is all about. Listen, we did it before in 2007 when the smoking ban came in, and we can do it again. So, look out for your teammates, make sure you talk to your manager, and let's make it happen. If you'd like support and advice regarding stopping smoking, then contact Occupational Health on 0151 471 2451 or call the National Smoking Helpline on 0300 123 1044. And thanks to South London and Morsley NHS Foundation Trust and to Lancashire Care for their help with this animation.